Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the ABH Times Jackie Aina eyeshadow palette. I am super excited to review this for you guys today just because Jackie is one of my favorite all time YouTubers. I love her so much. Jackie, 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 Jackie. But in today's video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the palettes. I'll also show you guys some swatches and also some comparisons because I do have a couple of Anastasia palettes now that I can actually do some comparisons for you guys. So you guys will also see that. And of course, towards the end, you will see my three looks using the one palette. So if you guys are interested in seeing all of that, then just continue watching. So let's go ahead and get started with a bit of product info. This palette is 45 US dollars. In New Zealand, you can get it at Mecca. It is 93 New Zealand dollars. And you guys, there is a currency difference in New Zealand and America. So $93, it does sound very expensive. But when you do convert 45 US dollars to New Zealand dollars, it does come around that price. I would say it's a little bit more expensive, but it does come to around like $80, $90 New Zealand dollars. So yes, it is more of a pricier palette. But in this palette, you do get a mirror, 14 shadows, and a dual-ended brush that comes in all of the Anastasia palettes. I don't think it's anything new. It's exactly the same. But in this palette, you do get six mattes and eight metallic slash shimmers. So just jumping straight into my review, I love this palette. Although there are more metallics than mattes, and typically I would prefer more mattes than metallics, I think the mattes in here are just perfect. You get your transition shadows, you get your medium tones, and you also get darker tones to deepen up a look as well. And there's just a good variety. You get like pinks, but then you get your warms, you get greens, you get purples. There's just a bit of everything. And I think the variety of looks that you can create with this palette is endless. I I didn't actually get to use all of the metallics within my three looks. So that just kind of shows you that there's going to be endless and endless of looks that you can create with this palette. And I think the color combination is pretty unique as well. I think the color combination is very pretty. I think purple and green is a very unique color story to play with. It's just a very fun palette, but you still can create everyday natural looks. I think there are some very, very special shades in here that I just think makes the whole palette that much more worth it. I will talk about the certain shades that I love. I'm a little bit later on but everything in here just works beautifully. I know Jackie in her video said that she wanted to create eyeshadows that didn't look ashy on her so obviously she created the perfect palette that would suit any person of color and then on someone like me who is an Asian gal that has a very strong golden warm undertone these look amazing on my skin tone as well. I think what you see in this palette like looking at the palette is what is going to show up on your eyes and nothing is going to change to an ashy gray color. Sometimes you get those browns in the palette it looks very warm but once you place it on your eyes it turns very gray very ashy like but all of these shades as you see them is going to look like on your eyes and it's just it's so pigmented and it's just so rich in color it's an amazing palette i honestly don't have any cons like to be honest it has enough mattes the shimmers are beautiful the metallics are beautiful and there's enough dark colors there's enough medium tones there's enough transitions to create a variety of looks so i think all around it is a really great palette i want to talk about some of my favorite shades in here again i didn't get to use all the shades yet but from the shades that I have used. I think Zam is a very, very beautiful shade, just like the most perfect everyday golden shade. So in this palette, you do get the mattes and you do get the metallics and the shimmers. So the shimmers are just so pretty. They have so much like glitter to it. If you guys are familiar with the Dose of Colors Frankation palette, the one that Desi and Katie created, their metallics are very like glittery. It looks so pretty under lighting, like it just sparkles so nicely. And if you guys are familiar with Isla Seda E, her palette Through My Eyes with ColourPop, Mesmerize. It's like that kind of formula. It is technically a shimmer shadow, but it has little specks of glitters in it where it just makes it look so mesmerizing. It literally looks like the Kara Kara app. Zam is literally like my new favorite all-time shadow. It's just so pretty and so perfect for every day. I think Shookington, this metallic purple, I'm actually wearing on my eyes today. I was literally so shocked of how pigmented this shade was. It is a metallic shadow. You don't need to use this wet. Like, you really don't. It, the pigmentation is there. And it's just so true to purple, as well as Big Wig. Usually, when you see, like, a purple in a palette, sometimes it goes on a little bit mauve and doesn't keep that true purple color. But Big Wig just stays, like, a true purple, and it's not patchy. I feel like purples are really hard to make 
make like a lot of purples are patchy but big wig not patchy and it is a true true purple I don't think I have such a true purple shade in my collection also edges this really warm terracotta shade again just goes onto the eyes very warm it doesn't sway ashy or gray I know Anastasia palettes are known for having a lot of fallout but to me personally fallout doesn't have anything to do with a formula I think the reason why they do have a lot of fallout is because it is so pigmented and so rich in color but literally all you do you just need a little you just tap very lightly into the pan tap it off and you're good I mean there's a little bit of fallout but honestly if you just do your eyes first problem solved I don't think that has anything to do with it I do think with Anastasia's eyeshadow formula you do need to play around with it a little bit to get used to it because it's just so pigmented and it's a little bit different from what we usually use like color pop or BH I think there is a little bit more practice needed with it but once you got it it literally just works like any other eyeshadow palette and works like a dream so yeah I'm a big fan of this palette I think the color story and color combination is amazing and I feel like Jackie just deserves it I'm here to support so I love this palette I honestly don't have anything bad to say about it so yeah that was pretty much it for my review we now can move on to the swatches the comparisons and then my three looks So to get started with the first look, I'm going to be taking the shade Ginger and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm just going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions, making sure we are taking it up towards our brow bone area because I do want the shadow to peek through. I'm also going to bring the shadow onto my lower lash line as well, but I'm only going to focus it towards the outer third and stopping it towards the middle. Moving on to the shade edges, I'm going to focus this right at the outer corner of my lid. I'm going to focus most of the product there first and then what is ever left on my brush, I can bring that towards the inner part of my crease. But we want the outer corners to be a lot darker than our inner corners. It's just going to create a really nice cat eyed shape and really elongate our eyes. Now I am using the shade Credit. I'm doing exactly the same thing but I am using a smaller brush and I'm also going to focus it a little bit lower. This is really going to help deepen up the eye look and just make the contrast even bigger. I'm also going to bring this onto my lower lash line as well. Again just at the outer third but this time I'll be pressing it up against my waterline rather than diffusing it out like I did previously. Now using the shade Zam, I am going to use the shadow Wet and I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my lid space. This shade is seriously the most beautiful shade I've ever seen. It's the most perfect glittery metallic bronzy gold shade and I love the shadow. It might have to be my favorite out of the whole palette. But just placing that in the inner third of my lid space just to diffuse it and make this look very smoky and diffuse, no harsh lines. And then I'm taking the shade Soleil. I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also my inner corners. And lastly, to complete the look, I'm taking the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Overboard. I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. Alright guys, so this is going to complete the first look. For my lashes, I am wearing the Natalia Light from House of Lashes. For my lip pairing, I decided to go with the ColourPop Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade Z Boys. This is definitely a look that I would wear out like on an everyday basis if I want something a little bit more glam. These shades and this technique is definitely just me. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys more of like a neutral glam daytime look and obviously the other two looks will involve more of the other colors so i hope you guys enjoyed this first look
To get started with the second look, I'm going to be taking the shade Supreme and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm going to place that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. I'm going to make sure I am blending that towards my brow bone, passing my crease area that way it can peep through underneath everything else. I'm also going to bring Supreme onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping it from the outer corner right to the inner corner. Moving on to the shade edges, I'm going to focus this mainly on my lid space first, packing on the color there, and then I'm going to bring it up towards my transition shadow. I'm going to blend these two shades together. I love mixing chocolate browns and pinks together. It really creates a really beautiful, muted, warm terracotta shade, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I will be taking the shade Credit. I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. This is where the smokiness is going to start kicking in. I'm just going to pack that right onto my lid space, but this time I'm mainly just going to focus it towards my lash line. I don't want to bring it too high up. Um, we do want that gradient effect, but this is where you're going to start seeing the dramatic smokiness come through. I'm also going to take Credit and push this up against my bottom waterline just to really define that bottom lash line as well. Now taking Wigglease, I'm going to use the shadow wet and place that right at the center of my lid first just to get the most pigment there. And then I'm kind of just going to diffuse it around the edges as well just to get a blown out effect. This is more of like a metallic shadow so there's not too many glitters in it. And it just gives a nice wash of sheen and a hint of red to the eyes. It makes the eyes look very dark and sultry which is the goal so I love that. And lastly, to complete the look, I'm just taking my Artisy in Mozart eyeliner and I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. Alright guys, so this is going to complete the second look for my lashes. I am wearing the Petite Cosmetics lashes in the style Goddess. For my lip pairing, I decided to go with the ColourPop Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade Give Me Some More. But that will complete the second look. I hope you guys enjoyed this sexy, smoky, grungy, red, smoky eye. I love how it makes my eyes look. I love the grunginess of it, so I hope you guys like it too. To get started with the final look, I'm going to be taking the shade Supreme once again and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm going to blend this up towards my brow bone just because I do want the shadow to peek through underneath the half cut crease that we're going to do a little later on. Moving on to the shade Pinker, I'm going to be placing this right at the outer corner of my eye. Just really packing on the color there first and then what is ever left on my brush, I'll bring that towards the inner part of my crease area, just creating some depth and dimension over there as well. Now I'm taking Big Wig and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to be deepening up the outer corner first and then taking that towards the inner part of my crease. Like I always mention when I do a half cut crease, you do want darker shadows around that inner part of your crease area. That way the half cut crease can contrast against that and really pop out. Then I like to take my P. Louise eyeshadow base and I'm going to be using this to help cut out my half cut crease. I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my lid space and bring that up towards my crease area. I'm actually going to pass my natural crease. You do want to do this that way when you look up you still can see the half cut crease and also that there is going to be no transfer. So just taking that a little bit higher than my natural fold where my crease is. I'm then going to take a smaller thin paintbrush and I'm going to use this to help define and cut out the crease just making it super super sharp and then I'm taking Shikington and I'm gonna use this right at the middle of my lid space kind of where the P. Louise base is fading off into the matte shadows this is going to help diffuse and just blend the shimmers and the mattes together and it's also going to add a really bright pop of purple there as well 
Now using the shade Dollars, I'm going to be using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right at the inner corner of my cut crease where we didn't place any shadow yet. Just take your time when you are placing this shadow on. You want to make sure you are not passing the half cut crease that we just cut out. You want to make sure you are getting right below it and using a metallic shadow wet will also be a little bit more helpful to get more precision with it. Now going back into the shade Supreme, I'm going to use this on my bottom lash line just right from the outer corner to the inner corner. I'm actually going to drag this quite low just because I want more of this like grungy smoked out look. And again, going back into the shade Big Wig, I'm going to press this up against my bottom waterline, just sweeping it back and forth, just making the lower lash line as dramatic as the cut crease. Taking my ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Piggy Bank, I'm going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline. And lastly, I will be taking the shade Trust Issues. I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners. I think the light iridescent green really complements dollars. So yeah, I just think it's the perfect inner corner highlight for this look. Alright guys, so this is going to complete the third look. For my lashes, I am wearing the Petite Cosmetic Lash in the style Sultry. For my lip pairing, I decided to go with the ColourPop Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade The Strand. But I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. You guys know I always have to do a half cut crease with every single palette because that's just my favorite technique to do. And I just like how this overall look turned out with the little flower clips in my hair. I just think everything looks monochromatic and I love it so yeah I hope you guys like it too but this guys is going to include my video for today I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me and also let me know your thoughts down below in the comments are you gonna pick it up have you already picked it up which look was your favorite let me know down below in the comments I would love to hear your opinion but yeah that wraps up today's video thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already I love you guys and I will see you in my next video bye